Good morning, everyone, or good evening, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, host our uh, four speakers this morning or uh, evening. Uh, so we have uh, four leaders who've been working on uh, site projects and uh, have been doing some very interesting work that they would share in this webinar. So our first presenter is uh, Viviana Viavisan. She's uh, from Ecuador, and uh, she's been working on a project in um, Ecuador in the Gulf of Guayaquil. So, uh, Viviana, I'll hand it over to you to uh, start your presentation. Okay. Thank you, Pali. Um, I'm Viviana, and I'm here to show um, all the things that we, we made in Ecuador about Cerritos project. This project, as you can see in the slide, uh -huh, thank you. <laughs> as you can see in the slide, uh, it was the first project, site project in Ecuador, and it was really good because I had the all the all the support from Pali because he was in Ecuador one year ago and we start planning how to create um, IEEE site groups in Ecuador section. So I think that the first thing to know is that you need to create or do you or you have to you have to join um, IEEE site in your section or in your student branch. As you can see, in we have in IEEE site a website that is really interested because you have all the projects that were made in the past years. An example is, as you can see in the slide, there are um, Latin American projects in Chile, Colombia, and Ecuador. And our project was rehabilitation of solar home system in Cerrito de los Morreños that is a community with 900 inhabitants that live in a isolated island community without access to electrical grid. So the, the goal in this project was to rehabilitate all the solar, not all, 20 solar homes that has solar panels because before, um, 10 years ago, um, they were provided with all the system, but due to uh, bad maintenance of the systems, now they were only working the solar panels and nothing else. So the first thing that we did was uh, try to recognize what was the problem in the community. The other thing was uh, to know who were the leaders in the community, and other things was try to to involve a university that is part of the community, like Espol, that is in Guayaquil City. So you have um, to to be really, really. Uh, we have to understand what is the problem, the real problem, and if we have any partnership and if we have enough volunteers, student volunteers, and professional volunteers in our SAI group. Um, the other thing is about the vision and mission that IEEE SAI have. As you can see, um, the goal here is to provide um, help with technology that we know and all the knowledge that we have for a community that really needs something that is not re is not so difficult to provide that we can manage only with a cooperation between a student and professional. And it's really easy to get, but you need to have a support from someone that knows how to go go in 
all in all the process that is applied for the project, how to get a good budget, how to get the funds, and how to do a good report. So in the next slide, we can see um, the next one, please. We can see that in the web page of IEEE site, we have different resources. For example, you will know what is an IEEE site project. You will have um, a digital classroom that provide all the webinars that we have had before, and you will know how to approach in a better way your application for the next project that you want, okay? And other thing is about um, how to apply for IEEE site project funding. You will have you will you have to know that there are different prerequisites and requisites that we need to we need to know and we have to establish in your IEEE site group. For example, in the next slide and. Um, you have introduction to project management. That is a webinar that you can find in that resource. Financial planning for humanitarian projects, fundamental of off-grid solar systems, and construct, constructing a strong site proposal. For example, if you, I think that in Latin America, it's really difficult, uh, not difficult, but is uh, something that could be difficult for the majority of people is try to apply because it is in English. So if you want to know how to construct a strong site project proposal, here we have a um, webinar that was conducted by Rosita Mejia and Mario Lemán, and they provide all the instructions, all the process, and it is in Spanish. I I have to say that the police um, web page was really really important in all the process because I didn't know what kind of projects I can apply. And I didn't know uh, nothing about how to build a good um, budget. And the principal support in this project was Dr. Singh, Dr. Prikpal Singh, that is the panelist in this webinar. So I think that the more important part is to have a supporter like Dr. Singh. And other thing is that I, I needed more information about solar system projects. And I contact with Rosita Mejia from El Salvador because I knew that she was working in that kind of project. So you have to be supported by someone someone else because you need a guidance in this kind of project someone that before has made the same or something really similar is really important because you need to know what are the steps in every in in your section for example it depends the the region that you belong with so I, I think that it's essential to have someone like a guidance, okay? The next one slide is about um, how to apply for an IEEE site. As you can see, we have um, UN Sustainable Development Goals and every site project has to achieve at least one goal of them. If you have more 
than one is really good. It will be really supported. And other thing is that you need to know that your prayer uh, it's between one thousand dollars and twenty thousand dollars to be approved by IEEE side. If your if your project needs more support, financial support, you need to establish um, partnerships uh, to can afford your project in the future. Or maybe if you have a really uh, a really big project, you can apply to HAC project fund. The other thing is that uh, IEEE volunteers around the world are our partners. So you need to know that we are a network and you can be supported by every person in this network. Okay. The next slide is about um, the location of the project. As you can see, we have Guayaquil, that is the is the principal city in Ecuador and we have here Cerrito de los Morreños. As you can see it's a really a small island that is one hour by boat away from Guayaquil and it has 900 inhabitants there. So you need to know your community you need to know the leaders of the community. You have to establish a partnership in, in the city in which you will be working on. And other thing is that you need a guidance from someone that really know how to afford uh, the project and what are the steps that you need to know. And maybe, and the other thing is that you have to be supported by your IEEE section because they will get the funds and you have to to have all the receipts get the funds immediately when you need okay the other slide is about the experience that we had in this project the first one is that we we learn how to collaborate with international partnership. Um, one thing that I have forgotten to say is that Dr. Sin is working in Villanova University. That is the university that now I am starting at. So he provide me all the guidance and we established with a school that was the, the university in which I was working on before. So we create a partnership between SPOL, IEEE, Ecuador section, and Villanova University. We have in Villanova University a program that is a volunteer program to service uh, with all the knowledge that you have in engineering. And it's really, really related with IEEE SI goal. The other experience is that we need to, to choose, or maybe you have to be really selective what kind of volunteer students you will choose for your project. Or, or maybe you can give um, support, you can support them to be confident with their self and other things is that sometimes students uh, don't know how to be involved with the community. So you have to support them in that aspect. And other thing is that um, the leaders of the community are really important in this, in this kind of project because you have to be part of the community. You have to really know what are the problems in the community. You really need to know that you are um, you are giving a solution and you are not giving a new problem for them. So 
you have to establish a, a meeting with the leaders and the rest of the community and to know what um, what is the next step of your project, what they think about the project, if they are really uh, interested in your project and if they think that the project is important for the community. is the best part to, to be motivated because every step that you have in this, in this kind of project is essential to be motivated because it's a volunteer. So you need that, um, that feeling in yourself. Other thing is empower the community members and know about the necessities of them, as I say before. Other thing is encourage more people in this kind of project because you know that you are one person and it's better when you have more people involved in the same goal. So in SPOL, we have a community project program for students that are in the last year of their bachelor. So they they have to achieve um, 100 hours working in a community project. So now uh, SPOL, know that, SPOL knows that Cerrito de los Morreños is um, has has many necessities about technology, not only in other aspects like economic that Spol was working before. Now, uh, FIEC, that is the Faculty of Electricity and Electricity and Electronic in Spol, they knows they know what are the necessities, and they are thinking about create new project to um, resolve not all the problem of the community, but at least the more uh, the more important, like communication, energy, um, and economics that they were working before. Other thing about the experience is that it's, it's really uh, not difficult, but you have to know how to manage all the budget with your section. And if you have a partnership, you have to be really clear about every um, every expense that you have with your partnership. So it's better when, ev when there is one person for every partner and if you have a meeting at least uh, two times per month to know what is the progress in the project that you are working on. And what else? Okay, the next, the next slide is about all the activities that we did in Cerrito de los Morreños. Um, um, thank you. This slide is about the, I, I, I have probably yeah, Viviana, just to be fair to all the other speakers, if you could uh, finish up in the next uh, two minutes, uh, then we can uh, move on to the next speaker, please. Okay. This is uh, why site groups are unique. As you can see, the local engagement, global network, cross sector, and do no harm. The other slide is about the activities that we did in Cerritos, in the forums, um, you can see, yeah, you can see how were before, um, how we found the last, uh, the last home systems that is in the left. Then we have a meeting in a school with Villanova students, SPOL students, and IEEE members. In Cerritos, the first step doing the, all the work was about the workshop. 
because we need uh, that all the community or at least one person per family uh, know how to maintain the solar system. And the other thing was, uh, as you can see below, that we have certificates for every person that was in the workshop. It that is really important because motivating to learn how to how to maintain their solar system in their houses and how they can uh, give support for the community. Maybe if one house needs man, uh, needs to know how to maintain their solar, they are a, a really good group to do that. And the other thing is that we change the, we rehabilitate the solar system, as you can see, and we take a pic, we took a picture of the, of every solar system that we rehabilitate. And that's all. I think that it's a, uh, Really quick. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, uh, Viviana. And uh, so I think we uh, can take uh, one uh, quick question if anyone has a question for Viviana. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Viviana, for your insights. I think uh, that was uh, very helpful. And uh, now we'll move on to John. So John is the engineer John Oyewole Funso Adekio. He's the 18th national chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, IEEE, and he's currently the IEEE Region 8 Chair for Humanity Activities. So uh, he's working in renewable energy as well. So uh, John, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much. And um, I welcome everyone to the first virtual conference on humanitarian activities. Um, I'm as introduced by Paul, may we move to the next Okay. So to we, today we'll be talking about the performance variations versus actual scenarios based on two experiences I have for the region eight and for Nigeria. And um, I'll be reviewing the projects which covers two years for the two as well. Collaborations, I'll give a brief about the internal administration, changes we made, um, the status of funds, and um, all the... Next slide, please. <laughs> Uh, basically, for humanitarian activities, it's purely service to humanity using the 17 Sustainable Development Goals by United Nations for unserved locations and underserved locations. So there's a need for us to plan. So in Region 8 and in Nigeria, especially for the projects we have funding for, we got funding for training last year, and we got projects for automatic irrigation system, system for rice during the dry season. So we planned, we developed and established an op operations manual with clear role assignments and relevant success defined key performance indicators to provide in the case whereby we ensure that the on sub locations that's the final destination of the projects were properly considered before the projects was, were moved in just like Vivian said the last speaker you need to do a KYC which is like you know your customer before you can deploy the project to the site and you also need to know the variations from the feedback you get based on the usage. So we have an operation manual for each project we have deployed so far. 
But in actual sense, we did only develop the operation manual the load, but we drove it down into the team members to understand how the project is meant to be sustained after implementation. So we looked at uh, each location having a resident volunteer who is an IEEE member. We built the capacity and then we broke down the understanding and knowledge of the usage of the project. It's like this. We've been able to achieve the completion and as implementation, design implementation and completion. But we have, we are still developing the maintenance that the mining service to sustain it beyond the regular schedule of projects. Because that is actually the key role of such projects. The sustainability of projects after completion. And uh, we're able to sign the preliminary acceptance test uh, certificate and final acceptance certificate by the community on the operations of the project. So what we did was we identified the best practices for the communication channels to develop all these sites within the community. And um, looking at our example in Nigeria, which is a developing country, there's no infrastructure that doesn't write on energy. And we are still dependent more on grid networks than off-grid. So we have to get alternative sources for such projects. And with that, we're able to actually achieve collaboration in organizations in the line of operations, even before the completion of the project. Um, we also engaged some few in with situations slides that are coming up that are really relevant or related in our field of uh, operations based on the specifics of the projects at each point in time. Next slide, please. So, based on this, we're able to have partnership, but no MOU at the regional level. We had MOU in Nigeria with number one, the Nigerian section, which is our parent body to support us in terms of endorsement on our request as we write the partners. Number two, the Solar Sisters International, where we bought some of the items we used for the training. And number three, the vendor that we used for the project in Anambra for the rice plantation. So we have an MOU with them as well. Then number four, we signed an MOU with the community. The government of Anambra. And um, we will have more coming up later on as we go back to sites, since the dry season is already here. Uh, because at every point in time, we need MOU for everybody to know exactly his role and functions. Um, next slide is. This is just an example. Fonts that could be approved. For instance, at the regional level, uh, we got an approval budget or an approved budget of $6,000. With a minimum disabled fund per individual of $500 and maximum of $750. But for the project, we got an approved funding of $7,500. And uh, we got a supporting fund from the Nigerian section through resources, not cash. And um, we also got some provisions services that are like consultant services that were meant to actually be paid for but are not paid for so they were done free for us based on the need to complement what i triple site has given us and uh, we calculated the manpower of the volunteer 
uh, that could have yielded into, uh, if it's academic environment, something you call the credit, the, the, the continuing educational units. So we calculated the manpower and we discovered we have invested close to $2,500. So in total, the ongoing projects might eventually be worth $15,000 on the second, when the second phase is completed, which is the drilling that we're going to start in the dry season. So, um, but basically, when you're looking at a sustainable project, the cost is not ending, it's not casting stone. Because even though you have the metrics written down, at every point in time, one thing comes up that is not well thought. And so you have to add it under logistics um, or miscellaneous. And that is how we're able to manage ourselves. We are using the best practices accounting procedures of the IEEE to document all our expenses. And we have receipts as well in as invoices. And the, of course, the IEEE Nigerian session, uh, session treasurer is the number one financial accounting officer. And he is much aware of the few disbursements that we've done on the project. Um, next slide, please. All right, uh, this is Egypt. It's not a project, it's just an event. So I might not dwell much on this. And this is one of the uh, um, IEEE session that is very active. And this gives details of their event. This is also Ghana. There was no project, but there was a presentation by one of the events. About 16 projects done in the African region. And we also launched the Young African Women Energy Forum. So, uh, okay, that's the website. And the, the, this slide on the screen is also showing what uh, presented Africa. Uh, August. During the Power Africa, companies came around. We couldn't uh, do much project exhibition based on the site. But during that period of Power Africa, I was in Kano, Kano State, and uh, where I met with the Chief Operations Officer of Tata, who was in charge of the Kano Distribution Company. His name is Ravi. Is from India or he's gone back now. He showed me projects in Kano. And so um, the projects focused on women literacy system and distribution of electricity in that unsat location, whereby they were given six hours of electricity to learn and study, and they were able to catch up within three months as compared to uh, I have some write ups submitted to which are ten. Next slide, All right. This is a event that took place in Glasgow, Scotland, that was attended by one of our volunteers. She also made some project uh, review and how to write proposals. Next slide, please. All right. Now, I'll dwell a little more on this. These are the collaborations we have. ASEC is in Turkey and Egypt as in the collaborations we had at the regional level. Solar Sister is in Nigeria, and the EY is an open initiative for women in Africa. We went to the IDP camp with this HIWA NGO, and we reviewed how we can sustain the energy during the night and early hours of the morning for the internally displaced persons that were there. So the project has started where we donated some we bought Solar Sister to illuminate the entire IDP camp, and we got an alternative uh, restroom, toilet, for the 800 people that were using only one toilet. And, uh, we, and uh, we are extending it into next year. So, um, Terrace de Homes is from Switzerland. The MOU is with them, as well as Codev. Yes. John, uh, thank you so much. Your presentation is great. Could I just ask you to wrap up in the next couple of minutes so we can get 
want uh, the other speakers to have enough time as well, please. Yeah, so we try to keep the project very simple. We make it very real for people to understand and be able to use it after completion. And we make it count by sustaining it as well. So we have um, a revisit or assessment or evaluation procedure set, set uh, laid down by the social return on invest, social impact on return on investment group. And then I, uh, what's her name? I just she attended a meeting in Malta and we discussed more about that. And then we look forward to making it count to the communities that are recipients of such projects by revisiting them regularly. So, and uh, this is my presentation. I hope I've been able to explain as much as possible. I'm sorry for the background noise. Thank you. Th thank you so much uh, for your presentation. That was very interesting. Uh, again, uh, maybe we have time for one quick question, if anyone has a question for John. If not, then uh, let's uh, move on to uh, Christoph. And uh, so Christoph uh, earned his uh, diploma in engineering and uh, doctor in engineering degrees in electrical engineering from Ruhr University, University in Bochum, Germany. And uh, he has established the uh, IEEE site Germany section. And uh, so uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you, Christoph. Thanks, Pali. So, yes, thank you very much. And well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Um, it's a pleasure for me to to speak here today. And um, yeah, so I will I will give some insights from the, the Germany section. Um, if you could go one slide, yes. Um, so overview on the, the small talk will be, I will introduce the side Germany section very br briefly that you can understand what our aims are, what we want to, want to go and for and want to work on. Um, then I'm going to present some selected activities, uh, which is a variation camp on technical support and refugee crisis that took place this year in July. Um, I will tell something about a project called database and a very recent project in um, in frame of the site week of the site xmas workshop uh, workshop and outreach in the end i give a short conclusion okay next slide please and next slide <laughs> so yeah the germany section was uh, funded and approved in november 2017 by 12 petitioners so you, usually you need six uh we had 12 and all those petitioners were professors or postdocs from several German universities. And uh, well, currently uh, we are 13 active members that meet at a monthly meeting. And um, basically you see the, the four chairs uh, in the picture. So me, I'm the in the, in the blue white shirt. I'm the chair of the German section. My co-chair, uh, Dr. Meyer is uh, the one in the green shirt and um, Nico Karsch in the red shirt is the student chair and Christian Schwer in the white shirt, the co-student chair. If you click one slide more, then we see the uh, organization diagram a little bit bigger. So as I said, we had 12 petitioners to found, found the um, Germany section. Those petitioners are now in the advisory board. And what we do in executive committee, we, we uh, report also to our advisory board and also to the um, IEEE Germany section, which is the Ombuds uh, organization. So we have an activity group uh, with monthly meetings, currently like 12, 13 persons. Those are students, other postdocs, so everything in the, in the rounding of university. And what we basically do is um, we tend to do national as well as international activities. And on national side in uh, in Germany, um, of course, a side project which can um, be with established technology, but also innovative technology. And um, we said we will do some kind of proposal support. So if we have an organization that needs further um, support, we will help them to to set up um, proposals. Yeah. So also national side, we uh, we do public relations um, work. So for advertising side, um, and also um, organize workshops for students, for people to give um, professional skill training 
in order that they can help in, in humanitarian activities. Um, on international side, uh, we also try to conduct side projects, again, with established technology or innovative technology. And um, this is a um, um, great idea, as we here at this university, we have been working in international projects before, uh, for example, with uh, universities in Colombia for, for landmine detection. And um, so what we always try is to, well, to have some project on national side, but also to, to get involved into international activities. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so one of the activities I want to talk about, the first one is the ideation camp uh, we had in July. Uh, next slide, please. So um, this, this is an activity, basically it's a, it was a workshop in Germany, um, so on the national side, but it also impacted, of course, established technology here and worldwide. And um, yeah, next slide is fine. <laughs> So, um, as you may know, there are currently two main large-scale refugee crises in the world. Uh, one is the North African Near East crisis, people coming to Europe. Um, we have um, refugee streams of more than two million in the last years to, uh, coming to Europe. And the other one is, and basically that's even worse, is the one in South America where people from uh, Venezuela uh, move to, to Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador, and Brazil. And um, although this appears to be different, um, but the problems are comparable. And our idea here was to, or to set up an ideation camp and to invite people from the affected areas in order to find technical solutions or technical support on, um, well, on this crisis, yes. Next slide, yeah. And um, so we set up um, this international side workshop and ideation camp on technical support and refugee crisis. Well, this was an international event. We were working on this event together with a, with a site Egypt group and also with site Colombia. And it was supported, well, by site, it was supported by the Humanitarian Activities Committee from IEEE. AP Society supported it, the Germany section supported it. And also, um, well, basically the Faculty for Electrical Engineering here at my university and also some um, companies from the surrounding. Uh, we co-located um, this ideation camp to a conference, IEEE MWS AMP, that was here in Bochum as well, and our yearly workshop, the RF Days 2019, in order to affect more people, to have more people around, and to tell them, show them what site does. Okay, next slide. I'm going to show you a little bit from the from the schedule. So um, all in all, were three days, and we um, basically, in order to make it possible that people from um, from abroad could come, we also had an uh, accommodation program people could apply for. And um, yeah, so the schedule and the first day, we um, had an opening session with several keynote speakers, all related uh, with technical questions, technical problems in refugee crisis. However, um, our first speaker, Baira Akela, was a, a, a refugee from Iraq who came to Germany two years ago, and she told about her way and the problems she faced there. And on this opening session, this was open for all participants from three um, events. Uh, we could count approximately 75 participants. Okay, next slide. After this, we basically had a welcome reception and um, because we put um, the ideation camp participants together in, in very international teams and uh, on the welcome reception, they should have uh, should go together and talk and get introduced to each other. And we also had information tables from site and, and different companies we're working with. And um, also, if you could go one slide further. Um, we had a technical demonstration from the Federal Agency for Technical Relief here in Germany about um, power supply in catastrophe scenarios and also in, in flooding scenarios. And um, well, there we could count even more participants, I would say like about 80. Okay, next slide. Uh, we come to Wednesday to the actual ideation camp. Um, we were able to um, put up five international groups of 30 participants coming from six countries. They got five hours of preparation time and well, they should be looking for a uh, um, technical solution for relief and refugee crisis by considering all the C, uh, site key values and they had to prepare um, a five minute elevator pitch that uh, was held in on the last day in front of the jury. 
and also the jury was very international so we were very happy uh, Juliana could make it to uh, to Germany she was here um, moreover we had um, Amy Lestuka from the Center for Sustainable Energy in USA she's caring about the refugee problem at the US Mexican border um, Vikas Moneburon from Siding in the Ocean was around and uh, this, um, the last one in the jury was Simon Kupas from Tupai Labs who basically sponsored the prize for the winning team. Next slide please. So the um, yeah, well, uh, within this, we had some keynote presentations um, on this day as well, um, showing um, well open to to site uh, members and also to uh, attendees from the the conference. It was around we counted like forty participants, and the talks were from Angelica Para, um, showing us activity of site Colombia and the uh, uh, AP S Colombia sections. Um, Van Vikas Moneburon um, told a little bit about his action project, the weather station project on Mauritius. And finally, Sampert um, told us via WebEx uh, what the role of IEEE site in sustainable development space. Next slide, please. Finally, um, on the last day, we had the jury presentations and uh, the winning idea here was uh, well, chatbot integration in a refugee app. Uh, we, um, basically, we have a refugee app here in Germany. And um, this chatbot should deliver local information in the US language, can set up uh, appointments uh, by himself and so on. And uh, what's interesting is the winning team who had this idea um, well, had members from uh, team members from Germany, from Colombia, and from Palestina. Um, they got a Tupai Labs Award for Humanitarian Technology, it was 1,000 euro, they, they split. And uh, well, now the first steps are that we're going to transfer um, this chatbot um, to the Integrate app and share it with uh, well, basically to Amy Lestuka in, in the United States and also to the people in Colombia. Next slide, please. I have some, some pictures. Um, you see basically me talking in the, in the um, award session from IMWS AMP. So um, Again, we could make the site activities very, very uh, open and popular. So 90 participants were around and um, you see the, the winning team in the, in the lower right picture. Okay, next slide. Some facts and numbers. So, um, well, this is this is uh, an interesting point. So, uh, pre-registered persons only for the site project, uh, for the site event were 63 from 12 countries. However, in the finalization camp, we only had 30 attendees from six countries. A reason for that is um, that we had quite some visa issues for all people coming from Egypt, India, and Iran. And we had some uh, problems for funding for people from Uganda, from Tunisia, and some Colombians also could not attend. However, we were, as I said, very happy that we had international side staff around. And um, having a look at the cost coverage, 43% uh, of the event was covered by uh, the HAC event funding. Um, so that's less than 50% of the rest of um, the cost was covered by the university, uh, by industry partner, by societies. And well, you see the last point is 5% um, from the Germany section. In fact, they would have uh, given more, but they told me they would cover the total remaining cost. And um, well, from the original plan, we re could reduce cost a little bit because as you see, uh, 30 persons could not attend. Uh, so we did not have to pay a lot of uh, hotel rooms. Okay, next slide, please. Um, second activity I want to talk about is the uh, project database. Next slide. And uh, this is um, a right now a national project with established technology. Next slide. So the idea is the following. So of course, also in Germany, we have a lot of needy persons and those needy persons, they cannot afford um, any cultural events, although they would love to do that. So you see the needy persons in the lower left, and well, some of them are interested in music, some of them are interested in theater or like in, in, in sports. So, but they cannot afford to buy a ticket. Um, so what can they do? Well, they can register in the database. Right. So they, they register in the database and they prove that they are needy persons. And while registering in the database, they can tick um, what kind of cultural interest they have. Next slide, please. So then that is done. Um, well, there are well all the cultures events. Um, maybe the the soccer team. Well, part of the Bochum is the one for the local team here. Um, when they have leftover tickets, they are very happy to give them out for uh, for needy persons. However, they never really get in contact with those people. 
But what they can do now is they just um, send a mail to the database and say, hey, we have so and so many tickets, leftover tickets. They can be picked up at this and this location tomorrow morning. So, for example, our, national, our local football club, soccer club, will um, give a message to the database and say, we have leftover tickets. Next slide, please. And the person who's interested in soccer gets an, an, a message that uh, he can pick up uh, some free tickets. And um, the next slide, please. So that's the basic idea. Oh, well, the project is called database because it's basically a database. Um, here, basically, we have no monetary funding from site um, because we are working together with several non-profit organizations here from the from the area. And um, so how is it done in the end? So we have, um, well, we are um, located here at university. So the realization, the programming will be done by students. And um, in the end, the final software will be kind of open source. And of course, it can be adapted to other distribution ideas uh, as well. So it must not be cultural tickets, but it can also be food or medicine or whatever. Next slide, please. Um, well, this project itself, it got kicked off um, on the 2nd of October of this year. And in order to get um, well, students involved, we opened a new regular course at the, at the universities in Bochum, Duisburg, and Dortmund. Those are different cities in the surrounding. So this course is called Humanitarian Technology. And when the students take part of it and they, um, well, um, well, they build up this, this database in this case, um, well, they will get credit points for the studies. So what we do here is we create a so-called win-win situation, uh, which is important because, well, you have your volunteers, of course, but you sometimes need more person and they would like to have uh, some kind of acknowledgement as well. Within this project, we have 13 active participants and we basically raised a big public media echo. So in the lower part, it's German, I know, but it's uh, it's part from newspaper and it's basically a big newspaper. It covers whole Western um, um, Germany. So it could be read by more than 2 million people in, in the newspaper. Um, the estimated uh, end of phase one, when all the, the basic structure of the uh, database is settled up, which should be by the end of February 2020. And we think that we can launch the, the final platform in, in autumn 2020. Um, also, we would like to distribute the idea, as I said, it's open source code um, via the site network. So if anyone is interested in, in using the database as well, is very um, invited to, to contact us and we will distribute um, this, this software to you as well. Okay, next slide. Yes, so last thing I want to talk about is uh, a very recent um, and short-term <laughs> um, project, our site XMIX workshop and outreach. Um, next slide. So it's uh, in frame of the, um, the site week 2019, and our idea was to combine positive impacts. So as I said, uh, we are here at university, and um, what we were aiming for is some professional skill training of new volunteers and to make site more, more public here. So what we organized last week, Wednesday last week, was a soldering work workshop for freshmen here at university. And uh, well, 25 persons showed up and uh, what we basically built together with them were these nice IEEE site Christmas trees. And um, well, this week we will give out those trees to uh, homeless and needy persons in order to give them some Christmas decoration they could not afford otherwise. Um, it has a positive impact because we, well, basically we have a professional skill training, we um, do something good for the needy persons, and we advertise at Ripley side once more. Because, uh, well, again, media is very, very uh, attentive to this and they really like it. We already had one big article and you will see a lot more on, on, on Facebook within the next days. So some facts and numbers, 62% um, of this were um, covered by IEEE site and the remaining 37.5% were covered by the Germany section. Um, we have involved 40 volunteers. There are, we had 20 new ones. And in total, we built up 100 of those XMIT trees and they will be distributed to needy persons in the next days. And let me show you the um, institutions we give those to. Next slide, please. Um, those five um, institutions are or 
three partners, um, which is uh, World Hotel Engel, which is a kitchen and wardrobe for children of needy families. Um, the Caritas in Bochum is a sub organization of Germany's basically biggest charity association. Um, the wardrobe of the German Red Cross in Bochum, you all know the Red Cross, and the wardrobe is that homeless and a needy person can go there and can get um, a clothes for, for the cold days. Also, we uh, will bring some trees to the Tafel Herne, it's a food bank where a needy person can go to and they can get free food. And basically today, and I came um, 45 minutes before we started here, back from um, the Hilda Heinemann School, which is a school for mentally disabled children, um, that well, I could uh, deliver already the first uh, trees today. Okay, next slide, please. Brings me already to the conclusion. Um, next slide. Yeah, so, well, the, the Side Germany section is still quite a young group. Uh, we were approved in November 2017. This has been two years right now. First year, we were basically working a little bit on defining ourselves. Um, but I think we did a good job and we can involve a lot of people. Um, as I showed you, we um, intend to do national and international activities, events and workshops. So if any groups are listening right now and you want to uh, collaborate with us, so just give me a call or write me an email. Um, well, we have growing numbers of volunteers. Uh, currently, the activity group has um, 12, 13 uh, volunteers, but we're growing. Um, and we are quite often in media because the university here likes it very much that we, we do this kind of work. And also, um, I'm in contact with the other IEEE student branches in Germany, so uh, we will do a um, common project next year as well. Yes, and as this is uh, called the insight from side project leaders, I, will, I have three take-home messages for you. So, um, first of all, it's a very practical thing. Um, if you organize international events and you go for accommodation program or accommodation funding for attendees, um, well, make sure um, that the people really attend. So um, that means we'll make a reimbursement instead of a pre-booking. Um, why do I say this? Because uh, we, we booked a lot of rooms for um, people coming from, from Africa or from India, from Iran. And in the end, they were unable to come. So basically, we booked empty rooms. Uh, fortunately, the hotel was well, very open and um, well, we, we um, did not have to pay for the, the free rooms in the end, uh, because well, only because we, they were very nice to us. And um, you go on back. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what else? So um, as SIDE has um, um, limited funding, of course, um, not all projects are funded or some of the projects are only partly funded. Uh, which is okay because then they, you, know, you can they can support more projects. Um, what you need to do is you need to find additional third-party funding. And here would give you the um, the hint to well ask for small and mid-sized companies to help you. Um, companies that are around. Um, maybe avoid big big shot companies because uh, well they usually have charity programs. And um, but then you have to get into those charity programs and this is going to be a tough task. The small and mid-sized companies are not that complicated and they very often really like to um, um, help you. Yeah, and the end, so my last uh, um, take home message would be create win-win situations. Um, your volunteers also really like to benefit a little bit from what they do. And for example, if you involve students, make sure they will get some credit points for, um, um, for their work as well. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, we'll that, that, thank you so much, uh, Christoph. Um, I, I really like the way that you've um, incorporated uh, local um, uh, community members, uh, particularly the refugees, and uh, brought together international uh, participants to address some of the challenges that they face, and then also working with um, local uh, homeless community as well. So that's uh, wonderful. Um, a question from uh, Daniel is, um, in, the, in terms of areas impacted by ongoing refugee crisis, is there a summary recommendations, a list of unanswered key questions uh, that you can share? Well, 
I can write something, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, um, what, what the, the main problem we, we issued, we, we saw um, what's go, what is around is basically a communication problem. Um, when refugees come to a new country, they do not know um, how things work and where to go, what to do. And um, especially in the, in the refugee crisis here in Europe, we saw that a lot of the refugees themselves, had, they had smartphones. Uh, which is good because they show them the way and, and so on. And um, well, with this app we have here, the Integrate app, um, it already provides a lot of information and uh, local information. So some some things you have to do in Germany as a refugee are different in, in the area where I live than, for example, in Bavaria or in the eastern part of Germany. So, and this app um, brings the right information to um, uh, to the people. Yeah, and um, well, this is something, for example, um, uh, Amy Lestuka was very interested in because uh, said it's um, it's the same thing in the U.S. and also the people from from Colombia said it would be great to have that because it can coordinate things a little bit better. And yeah, but I can I can write something and um, also yeah, well, if you if people are interested in in having contact to um, the owner of that app, it's also it's it's. Um, it's open open source. Um, you can just uh, adapt it. They don't they want they don't want they don't want to have money for that. Yeah, I think I think that would be great if you could write up something and then uh, Juliana can post it to uh, the site Facebook page. That would be wonderful. Yes, of course. Right. And then uh, Meha Kazim, I guess this is uh, in general uh, the question is: Do we arrange site activities within student branches and? Uh, I can answer that, that uh, we absolutely do. In fact, uh, the work that uh, Viviana presented earlier was really through the uh, student branch, but uh, as a site uh, group. So um, I guess uh, you can have coordination between a site group and a student branch. So thank you so much, Christoph. And uh, now I'd like to move on to our uh, last presenter, uh, Herbert Luanga. And uh, he's going to uh, talk about uh, uh, health related project uh, with the um, a company Neopenda that's doing infant vital signs monitoring. Um, Luanga is the chair of the Uganda uh, IEEE site section. So, um, Robert, it's uh, over to you. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Uh... I'll share my, uh, if, a couple of insights from the IEEE Uganda site group and uh, share a series of projects that uh, the project, uh, the group uh, has been able to execute. Uh, most of them are still ongoing. And uh, I was well as share a couple of experiences with uh, that the, the, the group has uh, been able to, to, to achieve, uh, to, 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 to achieve over time. We'll also share uh, a series of recommendations. Next, next slide, please. IEEE Uganda Site Group has a membership of about about 24 persons and it operates under the auspices of the IEEE Uganda section. The group members are generally active in a number of activities, engineering one engineering me being one of them. The group is also initiating and running projects that respond to community challenges. Uh, next, next, next slide, please. Uganda Site Group has successfully initiated and operated a number of projects, among which include uh, harnessing the uptake and utilization of the agro-based application among stakeholder, small smallholder small farmers that that involving women and youth in Uganda. So Uganda mainly relies on agriculture, and the big the biggest percentage of the population uh, relies on agriculture. So as a group, uh, the group uh, basing on the research done by the group uh, some one or two years back, uh, it found out that this 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 class of uh, population, this class of population is is facing a, a series of challenges as far as market access information 
as well as um, carrying out the best agriculture based uh, practices. So as a site group, the team uh, sat, uh, thought that it could come up with a solution that could actually assist in curbing some of those challenges. So the group zeroed down to uh, developing a mobile and web application uh, called named Zilla App. This is an ongoing project and uh, uh, in the next uh, two weeks, the group will, uh, currently the, the development process is ongoing and in, in the next two to three weeks, the the, 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 the actual testing of the the, the, the modified uh, application will begin. There's also another group, another project that is ongoing that is involving the installation of solar uh, technology at Mukuju Health Center. One of the biggest challenges uh, our rural-based health centers face is access to reliable electricity. So as a group, the team thought that it could come up with a solution that could actually assist this uh, 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 one of the health centers, which other cent health centers could actually uh, 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 copy from uh, by installing, installing as well as designing a solar PV uh, system for, for such health center. Apparently, uh, uh, a number of uh, units within the health centers have so far been installed with the health, with, with, with the solar energy. And the, in the next, I think, one or two months, uh, the entire uh, health center, the entire project actually will come to a completion uh, whereby most of the units will have uh, been like, installed with, uh, with solar energy. The other project that is ongoing that is almost coming to a close is uh, a project that looks at uh, reducing newborn mortality rates in Uganda through the use of a vital signs monitor. Within this project, IEEE site Uganda group uh, came into, collaborated, all came into partnership with Neopenda. Neopenda is a, a US-based uh, uh, technology uh, startup, whereby they together came, uh, thought of coming up with um, a, a, a solution that could actually uh, 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 de uh, detect the four vital signs uh, of a neonate. Among the four vital signs, these include the pressure, the heart rate, the respiratory rate, and, and then temperature. So within this project, uh, a, a tool, a device that can actually detect those four vital signs uh, has been developed, and it actually, uh, at the moment, uh, it's being uh, tried out in one of the uh, government hospitals in Uganda. This hospital is, part, is called Ginger Refer Hospital. So, basing on the on the results that the team uh, re, uh, gets out of this pi uh, testing of our pilot, uh, the, 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 the both the site group and uh, Neopenda will then uh, uh, it will guide uh, the site group and the Neopenda on the next steps. Next slide, please. Uh, I would also wish to share with you uh, a, 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 a series, a number of stages that uh, the Uganda site group goes through uh, in respect to the project operationalization process. One, usually this, uh, the group begins with generating ideas, and this involves the coming together of group members who in turn sit to discuss on how to identify the pre prevailing community challenges to which they can together as a team come up with a solution. Later on, the team goes into planning whereby <clears throat> uh, once the, the problem has been identified and the solution has been identified as well, the team goes on to carry out a stage by stage approach on how to apply that solution, a solution to that problem. The planning process involves in initial consultative meetings with key stakeholders. Among the stakeholders, these, in these include the community members, the where the project will, will, will actually be implemented, community leaders, as well as funding sources. And, as, and later on, uh, the team sits together to come up with a strategy, uh, to analyze the strategy that uh, it, it, will impl it will use in, in, the, in the project implementation. Uh, later on, uh, once the, the, the planning process has been uh, done and the, the funding has been actually uh, been put together, 
or uh, the funding has been identified, the project execution goes on. This involves the identification of different team members within the group, uh, as well as community members and local or partnering organization so that they can together implement the project. This, this also involves actual execution of the project activities according to the set plan. It also involves the team's readiness to readjust uh, uh to the project implementation strategies you know at times uh you might end up coming up with a, a, a plan a strategy to implement a particular, a particular sort of project but at, at times there are some unforeseen sort of uh challenges that uh, that comes up so as a as a team it is imperative that uh uh, uh we add we readjust so that uh the the, the the project actually achieves what is meant to achieve then uh, the last uh, stage is the project monitoring and impact assessment. In this process, usually the group plans for and conducts periodic monitoring of the ongoing projects as well as the evaluation process, which involves various project stakeholders. Among the stakeholders, like I've already said, this involves the community members who are the project beneficiaries, uh, 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 the, the, the funding uh, partners, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, all 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 IEEE volunteers that are that are taking part in the project. Next slide, please. I will also share an insight into applying for site project funding. Now that uh, we, as a site group in Uganda, have uh, received uh, a, a series of support from IEEE site uh, in terms of funding, uh, project funding. One, as a group or as uh, site members or as IEEE volunteers, it is imperative to uh, really, uh, uh, as group members, to inspire and motivate uh, site group members to, ident to, to identify as well as um, to, to support community challenges uh, so that as a team or as uh, volunteers we can together uh, come up to develop as well as establish a project that responds to such challenges. The group also has to have, it has to, to jointly identify a solution to the early identified challenge, which solution with time becomes the site project. Uh, the project, the group has also have, has, has got the ability to identify and engage local stakeholders within whom it can partner and start the project, as well as running the project with, as well as identifying other stakeholders that can, uh, other, other, as well as identifying other activities that can be operated under the auspices of the, the, the same project. The group uh, as site groups, it is imperative for us to really make use of the available funding opportunities. Uh, for example, uh, as site Uganda, what we usually do, uh, we whenever there is a call for site projects, we usually share it uh, to uh, all IEEE Uganda members, uh, whereby all members who pro could probably be living in communities which communities have related project solution challenges, which challenges could be solved by using some sort of technology solutions, uh, we share them th th those calls out so that actually each of the volunteer or each of the the group member is able at least to 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 to, to at least come up with, with 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 a project which project could later be funded so as 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 group leaders it is imperative to uh, encourage our members to take to take to make use of the available op funding opportunities by like applying for such funding the other issue is about to uh, the ability of our groups, all, all site groups, to prepare and produce fundable project proposals, uh, which could be jointly submitted for funding, as well as uh, identifying, making making use of the locally available 
funding opportunities. For example, uh, in one of the projects that, that I talked about, the Zira app, uh, within that project, we are collaborating with the, uh, a number of local partners. One of them is the National Agriculture Organization. This is a government organization that is in charge of uh, uh, that, that is in, that, that is mandated to overlook all agriculture related initiatives. So we are collaborating with the National Agriculture Organization uh, and within this organization, it is able to, to link us to various farming groups, uh, which actually uh, are able to also to contribute to, 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 to the perfection of the, of the and uh, for the Neopenda project, we are working closely with the Minister of Health. Minister of Health uh, is demanded uh, for you to test out any of the health-related technology. Uh, you have to actually get a license from the Minister of Health. So we actually work with the Minister of Health in in um, really taking the the, the, the the developing of the taking the Neopenda project forward, so that actually we can actually achieve. The project can actually achieve what is meant to achieve. Next slide, please. What are the, what are some of the lessons learned from the Uganda site team of projects? One, working as a team is more useful and important than uh, individual effort. Uh, we note that um, once you work as a team, you are able actually to achieve more. So we encourage all our members to work as a team as teams. In project work, the group has to be prepared to adjust to unforeseen happenings to enable the project to cope well with the various situations under which it operates. Funding should be requested to respond to given challenges, not just for its own sake. We usually ad uh, advise all our members who intend to apply in for projects to really make sure that uh, what they are proposing for actually uh, to really make sure that uh, uh, they're actually looking at solving a particular pro community problem, which problem which will in turn uh, uh, benefit the entire community. As site groups, it is important that we are well coordinated as well as organized. So as to participate effectively in group activities and uh, projects, uh, we note that uh, in many of our uh, groups, uh, times uh, uh, many of our members uh, tend to be busy, uh, employed in other, uh, quite busy. So what we usually do, we usually identify uh, meeting days that are actually favorable to each and every, at least the majority of members. So uh, so that actually um, uh, this brings about the group being organized. Uh, conflict resolutions are best managed through negotiating skills and appropriate dialogue processes. Like th this usually happens in projects. For example, you're running a project with multiple uh, partners or stakeholders. Conflicts will always come up. So as uh, group leaders, uh, section uh, site group members or leaders, it is imperative for us to uh, uh, train or to, to come up with uh, training activities uh, that are geared towards uh, taking our members through on how to manage such such situations, assuming they come up. Next slide, please. What are some of the recommendations? Apart from the ideas posted in the in my previous slides, we also recommend group members to consult widely during and after they get involved in a project. So we th th this comes about like for example as a group, uh, uh, assuming your your, intent, your your intention is to come up with a solution for a particular problem, we thought we think that it is imperative for you to uh, work very closely with your community your targeted community, make sure that what you are really intend to come up with will definitely benefit the, 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 the entire community. Don't just come up with uh, a project for its sake. Make sure that all stakeholders actually are involved and they actually understand what the, the project is all about. The project leaders should also encourage their members to be active while following the spirit of teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork is really key in achieving uh, project success.
As project leaders, we should always serve as role models in embracing the values of openness, transparency, and accountability. Next slide, please. I think uh, that's all. These are some of the, there are series of pictures that we have as a site Uganda group, but I said a few of them. These are some of the, 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 the pictures that are depicting uh, on the ongoing activities and projects. The first uh, picture on your left hand side is, is a picture in respect to the Neopenda project. Uh, that was uh, after one of the training workshops uh, where it involved a number of engineers uh, working on the on the on the on the neopenda device the other the other the second photo on top uh, from the left hand side is a, a picture where i was uh, uh, making a presentation at one of the nurse nurses nurses co conference so in here we went to to, to talk about what site is doing and how how uh, uh, doctors and nurses can partner with the site group in coming up with solutions to the related challenges. The the, the third photo on the on the on the, on top that's top right is uh, one of the some of the uh, group members participating in the Mukoju project. Here they had uh, invested visited the Mukoju Health Center. Uh, so, yeah, they had visited the Mkuju Health Center before the project began. The second, uh, on the second line, uh, sec left, is the uh, a group at Mkuju Health Center. The one standing is the head of the Mkuju Health Center, Center, Center 4, uh, where the, the, the installation of the solar project is ongoing. Also, the second, uh, uh, the second photo on the left, uh, down on the second line from left, is uh, those are some of the participants. We have a, a number of participants, I to E volunteer site participants in, in the Mukoju project, as well as uh, the 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 Mukoju Health Center management. Then on the the last photo on your right, uh, second line is one of the, uh, the, 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 the the meetings that I uh, geared that are in, in respect to the Neopenda project. The, here the team, uh, the engineers were actually contributing to the development process of the of the Neopenda device. I think that's all for the, in respect to the insights about the IEEE site group, Uganda site group. Thank you all. Thank you so much, uh, Luanga. That's uh, very interesting uh, work that you are doing there in um, Uganda. So um, I, we, we have time for maybe one quick question for Herbert Luanga. Anyone have a question for him? Okay, if not, then um, I'm really appreciative of uh, all of the presenters today, uh, Viviana, John, Christoph and uh, Herbert uh, for their uh, excellent uh, presentations, their insights that they provided into um, their experiences with uh, site activities. And uh, this uh, session, of course, is uh, recorded and will be posted in the digital classroom on the IEEE site uh, website. 